Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome back. So, after reviewing the 3D printer for them last year, the folks at GearBest wanted to know if I would like to review any other machines, and after thinking about it for a while, I inquired about uh, some of these lower-end laser engravers. Uh, they use a diode laser, and it's a, basically a small two-axis CNC machine that operates the laser head. They came back to me, and they actually sent me two uh, to kind of compare and contrast, so I thought I'd share those with you guys, and we can see what they're capable of and what they're all about. Now the first unit they sent me is called a D-Caker. It's a little self-contained unit and it's one and a half watts, 1500 milliwatts, and it has an 80 millimeter by 80 millimeter printing area. The unit itself comes pretty well packaged and it has all the cables you need, power, a little protective lens, and the USB cable. It also comes with a reasonably appointed user manual. The manual shows some of the basics of setting up the hardware, that's honestly pretty straightforward, and then the rest of it is all about the software that it comes with, and how to get images into it, and how to send those to the machine. It has a lot of adjustment, and a lot of pictures of anime to use as examples. The only real assembly required is to screw on this piece of filtered lens, this protective glass that sh shields you from any re reflections from the laser beam. It just needs to be screwed onto the front of the machine. Up in the workings of the machine, you can see the laser and the controller circuit, and there's a couple of zip ties on the ways of the machine. I presume this is for packaging and transport. Those need to be clipped off as well. I grabbed an old phone as the first uh, victim of this laser and just put some random stuff on there for funsies, and it worked okay. This is kind of a thicker plastic. Uh, this is without really messing with any of the settings. Speaking of the settings, they're all controlled in the software that comes with the machine. It's a pretty basic program called S-Carve. You can create text in it, you can import images or draw, like in MS Paint. You can optimize these images for the best possible laser engraving. And then in the control side of the software, you can control how fast it prints and at what depth. I tried to slow the print down so that I could get the most power out of it, and it still didn't really want to penetrate this other phone case I happen to have laying around. I got a bit of discoloration, but there really wasn't much of a change in the texture. I did have good results printing on a material called Craftex. It's kind of like leather. The small and self-contained nature of this machine uh, excited me. I thought it would be cool to print on top of things like workbenches and stuff like that. It's worth noting, it also has a small, and I don't know how effective, little computer fan in the back of its printing area, which I guess is nice, I guess could help. I got out here on the beauty shot table to show some more prints with it, and disaster struck. The actual USB connector on the circuit board just fell off when I tried to plug in the USB. So that really sucks, and kind of ends the story for the decaker for me. The other machine I received is called the AlexMaker A3, and it's a configurable setup. You can order what type of laser head you'd like, as well as the electrical plug it comes with. They sent me the 2.5 watt laser, and assembly wasn't too hard, although you do need to assemble the entire setup. Alex Maker has a guide on how to do this, as well as there's a few YouTube videos that are pretty in-depth, and I'll link those in the description. The factory assembly instructions don't really provide for cable management, as you can see it's really ugly. However, other sources do show how the cables are supposed to be maintained. To be perfectly honest, the fit and feel of everything is, is very smooth and tight. There's acrylic laser cut brackets that hold these aluminum extrusions together and the motors drive belts to drive the two axes. The board itself is just an Arduino. The power button isn't easy for my big fat fingers to hit, so that's something you may need to consider. Also, watch those connections. They're a little weak. The laser has a low power on button that will turn on the laser at its lowest setting so that you can focus it and you can use it to lay out where your printed image will be on your workpiece. Included with the laser is a little sampling of different materials to practice lasering on. The program that drives this laser that came with it is, well, it's better than the other program with the other laser. It has a lot more capabilities. It's also a little bit buggy, 
and it looks like you can get other programs that drive the Arduino directly. Uh, I've found a video on that, I'll link to it in the description, but that might be a huge improvement for this whole unit. Once it's set up in the program though, you can put your workpiece right there under the laser using the weak mode to center it. Now before firing it up, it's worth noting you need to have these laser safety glasses. They do come with the machine and I even ordered extra. It's very important, you don't want that to catch your eye. Now you can see how bright it is, this is just on camera. There's also a lot of smoke, so wherever you're doing it you want a lot of ventilation. Just about anything you're going to be lasering on is going to be releasing some pretty nasty stuff into the air. And that's kind of one of the downsides of these smaller machines. There's not real any means of good safe fume evacuation. There's also a lot of soot created, which kind of makes for an unclear image, and it actually burned through this wood you can see behind it. <laughs> However, uh, you can tell though that it burned almost all the way through this entire 8th inch thick plywood. It's a very deep engraving, which is kind of neat. The actual quality of the image itself is another question. It occurred to me it could be fun to cut some custom shapes out of just paper using this laser's power. I put a wood backing block so it didn't burn through the table I had it on. And so there's a problem right there. All I did was plug in a USB memory stick into the controller computer and it automatically turned on the high power laser. That's incredibly dangerous and a huge flaw with the driver software. Further wrestling with the software just to get the image loaded in, uh, I'm not entirely sure what the difference between all of the laser modes are or, or any of the modifiers to those modes, and it's not entirely clear as to a lot of the settings. It also likes to fail. <laughs> but if you just say continue, it sometimes works. Anyway, we got there. I tried adjusting some of the settings. It's a little bit more comprehensive in how the settings seem to work, although I don't know how effective they are on the actual laser. And doing a cutout like this, I actually expected this to go a lot easier than it did. It had a lot of problems with not really hitting the entire image. It seemed to skip parts of it. I don't know why this is. I'm going to blame the software, to be perfectly honest. I don't know if it did that intentionally to create uh, retainer tabs so that the part didn't fly out, but it kind of ruins the otherwise really cool cut outline of this custom cut shape. I also had some cool ideas kind of centering around guitar picks, and so I tried the text function inside the controller software, and it only seems to output one type of font, no matter what input setting you choose. This was kind of neat, but it also didn't come out very cleanly. It, it just kind of looks wonky, like it lost its place a number of times. Another idea I had with this machine was to do laser stippling on plastics, to add texture to plastics using the laser, and some of you may have seen the videos on Facebook and elsewhere of that being done. Uh, short answer, sorta? Uh, it, it could do it. My goodness, the fumes are really, really, really bad though. Open a window. Uh, again, the text function in this machine is just really weird, but it does cut plastic decently. One of the tricks to get around the program's text flaws w is to make text in another program like Photoshop and convert that into a JPEG and then import that and use that for cutting text with the laser. And that works decently on this little pocket knife, I was just having some fun with various types of things and what I could laser on them. The depth that it engraved into wood kind of gave me an idea that uh, you could make plaques, kind of like a faux brass plaque with this, by just engraving deep into a thinner piece of wood, like just this scrap plywood, and then potentially painting it maybe like a gold, silver, or brass color. The wallet you saw me engraving on earlier in the video is made out of this material called Craftex, which is like leather mixed with paper. It's a really fascinating material. It's most akin to like the label on your jeans. So I came up with a cool jean label I thought would be fun to make and attach to some. Truthfully, it was on the frustrating side to get the controller software to basically not cut through this material. 
I was able to do this with the smaller laser very easily, but with this laser it just wanted to keep cutting and burning through. It was also a challenge to get the actual resolution of the image just the way I liked it in the controlling program, and especially since it had so many different kind of strategies for how the laser could cut. I tried, I think all of them, just trying to find something that would work. And when I found something that wouldn't burn through the material, well, it seemed to lose its place every few lines, and everything just didn't match up. Like, complete no good there. And this seemed to happen a few different times. I finally gave up with this particular project uh, for my own sanity, but I believe it's the controller software's fault, to be perfectly honest. Now what everyone's going to ask me is, what does this thing do on metal? So we've got this little anodized aluminum SD card holder. Now, no, it won't really do anything to metal, and don't try that, because honestly, metal is reflective, and you could blind yourself. So, short answer, nothing. Long answer, I kind of got a little bit of color change in the anodization. Not really enough worth worrying about, and this took like 45 minutes. It took a long time. So the tale of these two cheap laser engravers isn't really that surprising. Uh, we had a lot of problems through and through, and I wouldn't say I really have any good examples of successful engravings to show you guys. I actually had a lot of ideas for projects that I wanted to do with these lasers, and my initial fears were that the lasers wouldn't themselves be powerful enough to do those. I thought that would be the major point of, of contention with these. In fact, it's actually really disappointing and, and frustrating that it was just kind of every other thing on, under the sun that gave me issues, like the hardware just breaking off out, out of the inside of the one laser. And the bigger laser, I think it's got a lot of potential. You can even get them up to 5.5 watts, which actually kind of seems dangerous now, the way that there's no real safeguards built into it. And the software itself seems like it has potential, but it's so problematic and buggy that you can get the actual high-powered laser to misfire. So, it, I, it's, it's really not something that I'm entirely comfortable using unless I maybe hack it and find a better software solution, but that's a lot of effort for an unknown outcome. Anyway, I hope you found some value in these reviews, and I hope it wasn't too obvious that these super cheap lasers, well, act as one would expect them to. Luckily, I still have my eyesight and all my fingers, and I will see you next time.